Hi, so I've had a lot of people ask me now about my dust collection system. I designed and installed this dust collection system back when I turned my garage into a woodworking space. And it has been a phenomenal system. It works super well. So today I'm going to go over it with you. I'm going to start right here at the blower. I got this blower from Harbor Freight for about $150. I'm not normally a big proponent of Harbor Freight tools and all their equipment, but in this case, this was less than half of the next blower that I could find that was equivalent power. And I've been very healthy, uh, happy with it because it's got a steel impeller, it's got a 15 amp motor, and it came with a whole bunch of extra stuff. And, and uh, I didn't need any of that stuff, so I just used the blower, and even then it was well worth it. So right here I have the uh, splitter that I kept. The bottom one goes to a 4 inch dust hose. I got these from Rockler Woodworking. This is that fancy dust hose that you can drag 20 feet around and yet it folds up to about 3 foot. Uh, these are pretty nice. The one downside I've found with them is that if you pull them 20 foot like they say, there is a substantial amount of springiness trying to pull you back to the wall. So you can't actually use them quite the distance that they're advertised. The other issue I've found with these is that trying to put them back into the brackets that you can buy to hold them is... It's... It's a bit of a struggle. And even then, it doesn't really want to stay there. But, if you don't, if you breathe just right, you can get it to stay right in the bracket that comes with it. Oops. So my dust collection system goes through those two walls of my garage. You can see it's actually made mostly of PVC. Now follow me and I'll show you where it starts here at the blower. These are four inch dust, uh, four inch lines. Uh, and the blower exits with a five inch line. This piece of flexible came with my blower. Uh, otherwise five inch dust hose is very expensive. So it was nice that I got enough from the blower to go up and out of my uh, out of my wall. Um, each of my taps, I have a uh, I have a lockouts that I can isolate that. That way, I can shut off all the ones except for the one that I'm using, and I can uh, get the maximum suction from the port that I am using. Now, up here, this flexible line is what connects into my PVC, and as I come around back here, I have a I have just a shop vac, smaller port, that I can just hook shop vac hose right up to this. And that way I can use it with tools back here, or if I ever decide to put dust collection on either of these machines, that's possible through there. I do use it mainly just to clean up after I'm using one of these machines. I don't really use it with dust collection as I'm running the machines like I should, but it, I at least do that. And up here it turns a 45, and it goes over my heater unit. Uh, it's always better to do a 45 degree angle than a 90 degree angle. You're going to get a lot less pressure drop if you do 245s instead of 190. Then as we come over here, again you can see it coming over the top of my heater unit. And when I installed the system, all these cabinets were down. I actually didn't have anything in here. The whole garage was empty. It was the first thing I installed. So all these cabinets were put in based on where the dust collection system is. But I have one drop right here where I knew I wanted to put my workbench and I've used this so that I can have dust collection with my sanders. And again, this is one of those fancy Rockler woodworking expandable hoses that I thought could go to 15 feet or whatever it says. But in reality, if I get more than about this, it springs back really hard and it's not really that useful. But the nice thing is for short distances, where even a, sh a shop vac hose would be all wound up, it is nice to be able to plug it into these sanders because the hose is so short right here. And again, I have slide gates so that I can isolate these. And I found that I can run two of these dust collection ports. I have one here and one down here. If I have either of those up, there's probably equivalent suction to what a shop vac is. So I can actually use two machines at the same time if they're the smaller ports. Otherwise, down here, I have the final 4-inch dust collection tap. And this is the one that I use mostly with my table saw or my jointer or other big equipment. 
Um, I have right patterned the wall next to it. I have the the Rockler woodworking floor sweeper. But the one modification I did have to make to this is that it had a plastic screen in here, and that plastic screen you couldn't suck up anything. It would just clog it up instantly. So I decided it wasn't worth having, even though it is a little bit of a safety feature. I left the screen in right before the blower, so should I suck up something large that can't go through the impeller, it will get caught at the blower. The other thing that makes it a lot easier, if I turn it on with my remote, sometimes I'll use the suction from the machine to help me hold up the hose. So if it's up like this, it actually does help a bit to use the suction. When I installed the, the dust system, it was a little bit extra to go ahead and get the remote start. Uh, this was about $75 to get the one that's rated for a 15 amp motor. Uh, if you have a smaller dust collector, you can go with like the Christmas tree ones that you can hit the remote and start up your Christmas tree. Uh, but my blower being 15 amps, I had to buy a pretty big one. And, uh, but I figured it was worth it because what's the point of installing a dust collection system if you'll never use it? I keep this remote on hand, and whatever machine I'm at, I can just hit it, start it up, shut it down. It's perfect. So one thing I discovered when trying to put together my dust collection system is that it's not as easy as it sounds. You look on the websites of places like Rockler or Woodcraft, and they say call it 4-inch dust hose, 4-inch dust hose fittings, 2.5-inch dust hose, 2.5-inch dust hose pipe. And to get the actual OD and ID and know what fittings are going to work with each other, it's a total nightmare. I'm a mechanical engineer and I struggled trying to figure out what fit with what. Um, I almost had to visit the store and measure the stuff because they don't put the actual dimensions online. So the cheapest way by far to put in a dust collection system is to use PVC pipe. This is a piece of 4 inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. You can see it's written on the side, Schedule 40. Now, piping is rated according to a nominal inside diameter. So this being 4 inch, it means that the inside will be approximately 4 inches. And that's what I can verify. It's actually slightly over 4 inches if you take a tape measure to it. Dust collection fittings, on the other hand, are meant to go with dust collection hose. Now, this is a piece of 5 inch dust collection hose. I don't have any 4 inch on hand to show you. But a 4-inch dust collection hose would fit over, this is a 4-inch dust collection fitting. And these fittings conveniently will fit inside the nominal 4-inch of 4-inch PVC pipe, just like this. This is the million dollar thing that I want to show you that will make you save money on your dust collection system. This is almost a friction fit between 4-inch dust collection fittings and the inside of a 4-inch PVC pipe. Now note that PVC fittings actually, this is the male part, the, the fittings fit over the top of it. So this would not fit in a fitting, but it does fit in the pipe. So you can use the pipe as a bushing to get between the fittings and your dust hose size. So if the situation with the 4 inch dust hose and 4 inch PVC pipe wasn't complicated enough, then you get into woodworking stores will sell you 2.5 inch dust port equipment. This doesn't make any sense at all to me because most of the woodworking tools that I buy, they have shop vac ports. And if you take a tape measure and you actually measure how big a shop vac port is, the, the standard ones anyway, they make several sizes, but the biggest shop vac hoses have two and one quarter female hoses that fit into two and one quarter holes that are in your equipment. And the shop vac Attachments are the cheapest that you'll find to use with your dust collection system. So how do I go from my 4-inch PVC to a couple of drops that I can use with a shop vac hose? Well, fortunately, Rockler Woodworking makes an adapter. And that is another key to the success of my system. This right here is the shop vac adapter right at the bottom here. This is true 2.5-inch pipe. So the pipes are 2.5-inch OD. The female fittings are two and a half inch ID and they fit together. But that's different from two and a quarter of this, so I need an adapter. So under my two and a half inch blast gate for isolating, I have an adapter to go from that to a standard shop vac port. And now 
I can take that hose right from my shop vac, I can plug it in there, and I can use my shop vac attachments that I misplace on the end of this hose, and I can go to any home store and buy attachments for my dust collection system. So from an engineering standpoint, if you want to get the most power out of your dust collection system, it's all about pressure drop. Every length of pipe, every fitting, every hose, it's all got a pressure drop rating. Hose is more pressure drop than pipe is. That's why for as long as possible, you want to have your dust going through pipe. Uh, also, hard bends are really hard on pressure drop. So if you'll notice up here, I have sort of a sweeping fitting that comes down. They actually sell these to go with toilets because when toilets flush, they want to have a nice sweeping entry into the, the, uh, the line. So if you use those, you're going to have much better pressure drop rate and you're going to get just a little bit more power out of your hose. Uh, the nice thing that also that comes with those toilet fittings is they're kind of like a T, and on the end of it, I put a plug. This way, if I ever did get some, something jammed into my pipe, I can open up this plug and I can rod it out or see what's going on in there and it's a very handy thing to have. It also allows me to potentially expand my system. I don't foresee that ever happening in my situation, but if it did, I do have a little bit of, I do have a spot where I could connect in another line. Now another dust collection myth I wanted to boggle is the static charge buildup that you get when wood moves through PVC. Uh, because PVC is an insulator, wood's an insulator, static charge can build up, and theoretically wood in the right concentration of wood dust, it can be explosive. So it is quite important that you have some way to handle the static charge buildup. Uh, you can see here that I have wire, copper wire, that starts here and it wraps around and around and around and around all the way down the pipe until I get back to my blower. And once I'm back here at the blower, this copper wire is put under one of the screws on the frame of the motor, which I know for sure is grounded to my electrical system. So any charge buildup is going to get grounded through the electrical system and I don't have to worry about charge buildup. One of the myths that I've heard though is people say you got to put the, the copper wire on the inside. This is in fact untrue because it's not so much a conductor as it is like an antenna. Just the same way that your antenna collects electromagnetic waves to make your TV work, uh, having the wire on the outside is going to prevent the uh, static charge from getting high enough to spark. And that's really what your goal is. So wrapping around the outside of the pipe is perfectly acceptable because just like an antenna, it will carry that charge to your ground. And here's where my dust collection exits the garage. It comes out the PVC through this flexible hose and into my Super Dust Deputy Cyclone by Oneida. I suppose you've been told that these super dust deputies are for single stage dust collection units. They filter out 99% of the dust and they only work on the suction side. Ah, not true. The laws of fluid mechanics tell us that whether we're sucking or blowing, air moves through the cyclone by a pressure drop and it's going to filter out that dust, those dust particles anyway. And if you don't believe me, look around. It's pretty clean and I've been running this today. Now I suppose you're thinking, well gee Craftsman Dave, that's awfully cool. But doesn't that blower outside bother the neighbors? Not at all. Listen for yourself. Oh, that's no louder than a, maybe a dryer blowing up the side of your house. It's actually surprisingly quiet because going through the cyclone actually muffles the sound of the blower a little bit. The other thing I want to point out is these super dust deputies are awesome, but they have a 5 inch hose port going in and a 6 inch hose port coming off. And five and six inch dust collection hoses, those are really expensive. So I put an adapter back down to a four inch right here and I haven't had any trouble with pressure drop. Probably helps that I don't have a filter on this system either. And here, instead of buying some expensive six inch dust hose, I just went to my local hardware store and got a little vent cap for six inch pipe. I mounted the cycle into a plastic garbage can that I got very inexpensively from my home center. And this has worked out great. I was originally considering having a second garbage can with a filter in it, but I figured since it's outside, why do I need the filter? Now I'm going to show you how I empty my dust collection here. It's not, if I take the lid off, it's actually not even heavy. Uh, I really need to build a stand or something 
to put this while I'm cleaning it out, but I actually just let it hang and it seems to be okay. And you can see I have quite a bit of chips and stuff. I did, I put down two cement blocks and I have it attached to the cement blocks with bungee cords on both sides. So I just need to remove the bungees. And now I'm free to take what I've collected and dump it into my trash. Whew. I need dust collection for this job. So I'm back outside a few months later. And I want to point out, I've had this system in, I've installed it uh, December of last year, and it's now October, so it's been in for about 10 months or so, I've been using it. Uh, this summer what did happen is I got a crack in my hose right here, which is why you can see there's a little bit of dust around. It actually doesn't leak much out of the Oneida um, dust up here, even. but the reason that this came out is because of the, the sunlight. The UV rays have hit it, they've deteriorated the plastic. So just be aware that if you're going to use 4 inch dust hose outside, the sunlight's going to be an issue. I have plans to replace this piece of hose, and I'm actually going to spray paint it with something that has a spar in it which will resist the sun's UV uh, attacks. So now if you're going to be like me and you're going to skip having a filter on your dust collection system and you're just going to blow it outside, there is one safety concern I want to point out, especially if your garage is heated by a natural gas heater like mine. This here is the stack to my natural gas furnace. There's two pipes. There's an inner pipe and an, ex and an outer pipe. The outer pipe is the intake and the center one is the exhaust. And it's called separated combustion. In order to heat my shop, the unit actually sucks fresh air from outside and then blows the exhaust outside, keeping it completely separate from the air that I breathe inside. Now the issue with blowing your dust collection outside is that it actually draws a vacuum on your entire shop. And if you don't have an, a separated combustion unit, you'll actually suck that exhaust from your unit right into the air that you're breathing and it can actually kill you with the carbon monoxide poisoning. So now I'm going to demonstrate how much power it has. This is my final 4 inch dust hose. It's the farthest away from my collector so it's going to have the least power out of my system. And I'm going to clean up my table saw with it. Shopvac's bigger shop bag. This is what I used before my dust collection system. And a single tap on my system. I have all the other ports closed. This is the only thing that's going to be running. between the two. Maybe the shop back has slightly more, but they're pretty equivalent. 